the first winter after humans did witness the die-off of some cockroaches. But many more moved underground to find warmth until milder temperatures returned. In an abandoned downtown, devoid of insecticides, overrun by vegetation, and with a rising water table, this former pest is now enjoying a golden age. Cockroaches were only a nuisance to humans. But wolves were a terror. So man hunted them mercilessly. When the first European settlers arrived in what is now the United States, it's believed nearly half a million wolves roamed the countryside. By the 20th century, these predators were nearly extinct in the lower 48 states. Now, with no humans left to battle them, wolf populations multiply by as much as six times each year. Within 25 years of our disappearance, there could easily be half a million of them roaming the United States again. This amazing comeback has been seen on a small scale before. In 1995, biologists released a few dozen wolves within the boundaries of Yellowstone National Park, a place where they would be protected from persecution by humans. Within a decade, a few dozen had multiplied into 1,500. And the wolves quickly spread out from their release point to occupy territory throughout the states of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. It'll be fast. And if you can start with just a few dozen wolves and in the course of one decade have a population of 1,500, and you can have a geographic expansion where they've filled up big chunk of a three-state area, and these are big western states. Yeah, when the conditions are right, they can recolonize pretty rapidly. Could we see them in Manhattan or Chicago? As soon as the deer get there, the wolves will be right behind them. Animals haven't just been hunted by humans. They've also been hemmed in. There are over three million miles of paved road in the United States alone. And it's no coincidence that many of them cut right through the paths animals use to get from place to place. The things that make a landscape good for animal movement also make it easy to engineer a road into that location. So we've cut off pretty much all major migrations in North America. Asphalt and automobiles wreak particular havoc on the grizzly bear. Their habitat was so carved up by roads that they were confined to isolated pockets, cutting them off from food sources and potential mates. In a life after humans, roads are no longer barriers for the grizzly. Instead, they are pathways, trails that lead them back into the heart of their former range. Forty years after people. While cities of steel and concrete are still standing tall, the suburbs are under attack. Roughly 90% of all homes in the United States have wood frames, while some have burned. Others are now being devoured.
Without paint and preservatives, the lumber of homes is defenseless against termites. Termites feast on cellulose, the basic building block of wood. And their appetites are relentless. Some colonies can eat as much as 1,000 pounds of wood per year. In this destructive advance, the termites aren't working alone. The process we know as rotting will occur when the wood gets exposed to the elements. And this rotting actually is a more complicated process. It's a process by which microbes attack the wood and release carbon dioxide and methane to the atmosphere. If humans were to leave, it would be a matter of decades before most structures that had significant wood components would start to decay. Faced with the two-pronged attack from termites and rot, the beams that hold up the roof give way, and the boundary between inside and out that had once been so important to the humans who called this building home is forever erased. Other substances like this mortar and rock are going to last longer than several decades, but they'll still crumble uh, through natural chemical and physical weathering processes, and eventually these walls will fall down as well, and there'll be no remnants. Now, nature will act quickly to swallow up these ruins. This crumbling house in Baltimore's Druid Hill Park was once home to the caretaker of the city zoo, it looks like this building has been abandoned for more than 100 years, but in reality, people have been living here up till 40 years ago. It's amazing how quickly the vegetation has reclaimed the area. The vines have started to climb up the walls, the trees are growing into the structure, and they're both physically pulling the structure apart and chemically dissolving it. Structures built entirely of stone or masonry will far outlive anything made of wood. Exactly how fast they will crumble depends on their environment. The coast of Maine really isn't very kind to buildings. Structures out here don't so much decay when you leave them alone, they melt. These structures on Black Island, Maine, used to be part of a granite quarry whose stone was used to build and decorate cities like Boston, New York, and Philadelphia. It was abandoned around 1920. Here, the buildings have all vanished within the space of 80 or 90 years. There's almost nothing left. In the right conditions, and with human maintenance, stone construction can last for thousands of years. In some places in Europe, ancient Roman aqueducts are still in use. But without maintenance, stone can fall victim to a very stealthy enemy. One of the great enemies of stone is actually salts and salt crystals. Even thousands of years ago, people noticed the effect that salts had on deteriorating the ancient pyramids. There are many ways salts infiltrate stone buildings and monuments. Polluted air, seawater, and even bird droppings. Soluble salts dissolve in water, and as the water evaporates, it will rise up inside of uh, porous building materials, things like brick and stone and even concrete. And what happens is the salts will continue to grow inside the pores of the stone until they come up against the, the side of the wall, and they'll actually push the stone apart. What we're seeing in this time-lapse video really shows the rapid decay of the stone in response to this deterioration by salts. In this experiment, it took about three weeks to go from this piece of stone to this piece of stone, which is completely deteriorated by sodium sulfate crystallization. Three weeks in this accelerated aging chamber are equivalent to a few years in the harshest of environments or a few decades in a more benign desert climate. If we could see microscopically what's going on inside the pyramids, this is what would be taking place. You could actually see the salts deteriorate the stone. <laughs> 